Mrs. Pierce! Pickering! I don't know where the girl went. It's all Mr. Higgins. Pickering! But didn't she say where to send her clothes? I told you, sir. She took them all with her. Uh, what? What? Well, here's a confounded thing. Eliza's bolted. Bolted? Yes, bolted. And Mrs. Pierce didn't tell me a word about it. Uh, well, I'm dead. What am I to do? I got tea this morning instead of coffee. I can't find anything. I don't know what appointments I've got. Eliza would know. Yes, of course she would, damn it, but she's gone. Did any of you gentlemen frighten her last night? Uh, well, you were there, Mrs. Pierce. We hardly said a word to her. Uh, uh, Higgins, did you bully her after I went to bed? Just the other way around. She threw slippers at me. I never gave her the slightest provocation. The slippers came bang at my head before I even uttered a word, and she used the most perfectly awful language. I was shocked. Well, I'm dead. I don't understand it. But she was shown every possible consideration. She admitted it herself. Well, I'm dashed. Oh, Pickering, stop being dashed and do something. <laughs> what? Call the police. What are they there for, in heaven's name? Mr. Higgins, you can't give Eliza's name to the police as if she were a thief or, or a lost umbrella. Why not? I want to find her. The girl belongs to me. I paid five pounds for her. <laughs> Quite right. Uh, Scotland Yard... Uh, the... Mrs. Pierce, I'll have some coffee. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yes, good morning, old chap. This is Colonel Hugh Pickering, 27A Wimpole Street. I I'd like to report a missing person. Anything you could do to assist in her recovery will be gratefully appreciated. I'm not without influence, and I'll see to it that you're so... Yes, uh, Eliza Doolittle, uh, about 21. Uh, I would say uh, five foot seven. Uh, her eyes are... Um, brown. Brown. Uh, her hair, well, it's a, a rather neutral, nondescript sort of... Uh, brown and brown and brown! <laughs> well, you heard what he said. Uh, brown. Yes, uh, this is her residence. Between three and four this morning. No, no. No relation at all, let's just say good friends. Now look here, my good man, I'm not at all pleased with the tenor of that question. What the girl does here is our affair. Your affair is to get her back so she can continue doing it. What in all of heaven could have prompted her to go after such a triumph at the ball? What could have depressed her? What could have possessed her? I cannot understand the wretch at all. Higgins, I have an old school chum who works at the home office. Perhaps he can help our, our call. Whitehall 7, 2 double 4, please. Women are irrational, that's all there is to that. Their heads are full of cotton, hay, and rags. They're nothing but exasperating, irritating, vacillating, calculating, agitating, maddening, and infuriating hags. Have mercy. Oh. Brewster Budgeon. Yes, I wait. Pickering, why can't a woman be more like a man? Yes, but why can't a woman be more like a man? Men are so honest, so thoroughly square, eternally noble, historically fair, who, when you win, will always give your back a pat. Can't a woman be like that? Why does everyone do what the others do? Can't a woman learn to use her head? Why do they do everything their mothers do? Why don't they grow up like their father instead? Why can't a woman behave like a man? And men are so pleasant, so easy to please. Whenever you're with them, you're always at ease. Would you be slighted if I didn't speak for hours? Of course Would not. you be livid if I had a drink or two? Nonsense. Would you be wounded if I never sent you flowers? Never. Why can't a woman be like you? If one man in a million may shout a bit. Now and then there's one with slight defects. One perhaps whose truthfulness you doubt a bit. But by and large, we are a marvelous sex. Why can't a woman be more like a man? Men are so friendly, good-natured and kind. A better companion you never will find. If I were hours late for dinner, would you bellow? Of course not. If I forgot your silly birthday, would you fuss? Nonsense. Would you complain if I took out an other fellow? Never. Why can't a woman 
be like us. Uh, yes, uh, may I please speak with Bruce DeBudgeon? Boozy. You'll never, never, never guess who this is. Yes, that's it. <laughs> By George, what a memory. How are you, my old friend? So good to hear your voice again. 30 years. Is it really? Oh, that's, that's, that's a lot of water under that. Uh, 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 Boozy, I, I'll tell you why I called. Uh, something rather unpleasant has happened at this end. Could I come right over and see you? Good. Uh, I'll be right there. Uh, uh, thank you, Boozy. Uh, uh, Mrs. Pierce, I, I'm going over to the home office. I do hope you find her, Colonel Pickering. Mr. Higgins will miss her. And Mr. Higgins will miss her. Blast Mr. Higgins. I'll miss her. Pickering! Pick... Where's the colonel? He's gone over to the home office, sir. Look, you see that, Mrs. Pierce? I'm disturbed, and he runs to help. Now, that's a good fellow for you. <laughs> Mrs. Pierce, you're a woman. Why can't a woman behave like a man? Men are so decent, such regular chaps, ready to help you through any mishaps, ready to buck you up whenever you are glum. Why can't a woman be a chum? Why is thinking something women never do? Why is logic never even tried? Straightening up her hair is all she'll ever do. Why don't they straighten up the mess that's inside? Why can't a woman be more like a man? If I were a woman who'd been to a ball, <laughs> been hailed as a princess by one and by all, would I start weeping like a bathtub overflowing? Or carry on as if my home were in a tree? Would I run out and never tell me where I'm going? Why can't a woman be like me?